Howdy folks, thanks for tuning in. Hope y'all doing okay today. So, um, before I get into it, I have a strange question to ask. I live out in the middle of nowhere. My driveway is half mile long from house to the end. And I've got a one-ish year old border collie pup that every once in a while decides she wants to try to herd the car. And I'm afraid I'm going to run over her. She's a good dog in basically every respect aside from chasing cars. So any tips on how to get rid of that, I'm open to them. I've tried honking the horn at her when she gets in front. No good. She tries to corner the mail lady's vehicle sometimes. UPS guy, whatever. You get the idea. So, open to suggestions. Anyway. So, I have something totally different on my mind today. Um, before I get into that... I want to make clear that this is not a jumping on the SS toot your own horn or bragging on family. I am move. I am merely stating facts about events prior and current. Okay? So I'm tired of politics. I seen a meme today that very accurately describes the way I think myself and a lot of other Americans are feeling right now. With all the stress eating, I'll get to 270 before either of the candidates. So, all that said, here is what's on my mind. And I'm going to try to tell this story, these stories without shaming people. Um, when I was five or six years old, I think, my granddad on my mom's side had emphysema, was and he just got to the point where he was unable to live on his own anymore. He lived uh, three, three and a half hours away in a little tiny town uh, across state lines. And I remember at that age, packing up into my parents' vehicle and riding to his house and picking up all that he would need. We picked up a handful of pieces of furniture. My granddad had an old pickup truck. And we loaded, well, my parents loaded that truck full of his stuff oxygen concentrators, um, oxygen tanks, his bed, and uh, I think there was a dresser and a chest of drawers, a couple other odds and ends in his clothes, and we brought him home. And he was really struggling on that trip because a lot of times when the tanks would get low, they couldn't get out and get him a tank instantly because we had drove through some rain. And so all the load was tarped off. And so you had to untie the tarp in a corner and reach in and grab a tank and put the other tank in. And So he was really struggling on that trip. He rode back with my dad in my granddad's pickup truck. And he lived with us for three and a half years in various states of health. There were several hospital stays in there where he got in rough shape. And we couldn't handle it at the house. He ended up getting a, he had a hospital bed, bedside toilet. Um, and just the stuff that you have to take care of someone that's in 
declining health. So, um, the next story I got, and, and he stayed with us until he passed away two and a half or three and a half years later, I think. He died. He died in that house. So, anyway. Fast forward. Uh, a couple years. My granddad, on my dad's side, was diagnosed with tuberculosis. And was in he had been in declining health for a while just old and lived kind of a a rough life prior to the 50s and <clears throat> my grandmother was getting real bad with dementia or early Alzheimer's and so my granddad ended up having a hospital stay lasted about a week, week and a half well when he uh, got out all of his children my dad and then my two aunts had made the decision to set up a rotating schedule of family members based on everyone's schedule and everyone's obligations and free time and ability to arrange near round the clock care for my grandparents. My granddad was in bad enough physical shape that he couldn't be left alone because he couldn't take care of himself and my grandmother while she never got overly weak um, she might forget to take some important medications or forget that she had eaten dinner forget to turn off the stove that kind of stuff so we uh, <clears throat> had arranged to take care of all the grandparents or my grandparents on that side Everybody was involved, you know, whether you were coming to stay the night just in case there was something needed to be done in the middle of the night, uh, coming down during the day to sit with them and cook dinner and all that. My mother, I remember this very well, I was home, and my mother took uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'd get up in the morning and head down to my grandparents' house, we may or may not see uh, the previ whoever was there before us. I mean, they could sit for an hour or two and be fine. But, you know, there were times that, I mean, you just didn't want to leave them sitting for a while. So, like, if you fed them breakfast and you knew your help was going to be there in an hour, they'd be fine. Well, um... So they had got around the clock care, and as people's schedules changed, one of my aunts had actually uh, arranged for in home care from some people that she knew. <clears throat> Still keep in touch with two of them, they're very nice people. Uh, one of them was actually with my grandmother when she died, was right by her side at the very end absolute sweetest woman she actually works at the gas station closest to my house i see her once a week on average um well anyway <clears throat> moving on past all that um and then one of my aunts she's got alzheimer's pretty bad and her immediate family stepping up doing the same thing. So, on both sides of the family, 
their stories about when people get old and infirm. Them, you know, the family coming together and making sure that everybody gets taken care of. Well, I have a family member who has COPD and is not in the best shape physically that has been living on their own. Uh, spouse died four years ago. And they've had a few ups and downs. You know, they were able to get out and do stuff for a while and that got less and less and Finally, they're just not able to easily. Uh, was having difficulty driving. Actually ended up in an accident because of that. Uh, sore, but walked away. Um, having a bunch of not too steady on their feet. Actually fell down in the shower. last week and they've got you know all the the suction cup grabby handles and the the shower chair and all that stuff to make it easy but they fell down getting in or out and couldn't get themselves back up well um my mother has stepped in to fill that gap in ability versus need. They are... She's been doing everything that she can to help and help take care of and all that. And their needs are exceeding her abilities. Someone saw the truck in half. Not something you see every day. So, person is a veteran working with the VA in order to get uh, some sort of nursing style care available to them. And it's been, I'm not going to criticize the VA out and out. I think that they're, I'm not going to get into that discussion today. I think that there are ways that the VA does excel in areas over traditional health care, especially when you're talking about stuff that's just aimed at veterans also think that there are ways where the VA is way behind areas that the VA is way behind uh, non-government run health care private sector stuff I think that there are ways that the VA could be changed in order to better serve those that served. That's all I have to say on that for today. Well, it's been a massive headache to get this done, and at the end of the day, we don't know if how much of the bill the VA is going to cover this person I'm speaking of does have a little bit of debt. And they've got other small bills that need to be paid, <clears throat> even if they're moved into a assisted living scenario. So, I don't... And the VA said that it may or may not be able to cover 
the uptick in expenses where they're able to have a little bit of spending money. They might end up in the hole every month. We don't know yet. So, the thing that's starting to irritate everyone in my house, this person has family members. Two daughters, a son, the son lives very locally. Daughters live significant distances away. Well, um, what's irritating to me is they are aware of their ladybugs all in this truck. Their parents' health. And they haven't done much in the way of helping. And I don't know everyone's current situation financially, family, housing, whatever, but I don't know how much that matters. You know, my parents took care of me from the time that I was completely dependent on them for everything, including food, not being able to feed myself through the teen years and beyond. When my dad got sick with cancer back in 2016, he was the sole source of income for him and my mother. And he didn't know if mom would be able to afford stuff on her own. And I, I, I remember this very clearly. We were sitting down at the dining room table at his house. And I promised him that whatever I had to do, I would make sure my, that my mother was taken care of. Well, sparing all the exceedingly boring details, um, two months after my dad died, the house burned down that my mother was living in. And there were other massive considerations that went into all these things I'm give, I'm definitely not doing this story justice but my wife and I both promised that and we uh, basically agreed to take out a construction loan to pay to rebuild the house and add on to it so my mom has a mother-in-law suite and she lives with us on the back of the house because she couldn't have afforded to do what needed to be done to fix the house. So, I, um, it's just, upsetting to me to see family members abandon their own to that degree and in a nutshell before I left the house today my mother and I were talking she was kind of bringing me up to speed on what's going on and she's like I'm open to ideas because I'm out I have no other ideas, no other ways to make stuff happen. I got nothing. Um, if this don't work for whatever reason, I can't think of anything else. Well, we uh, sat there for a few minutes, and I had mentioned one idea, and it's one that I've had for a while, but no one particularly likes, and I don't even like it. It's just an idea. 
and my wife was sitting there and she said call his children you know you've been doing this for a year and a half two years at this point you uh and you've been doing it alone by and large i mean my wife and i help and we can but you know, we've got our own children and our own jobs, and we work more hours than she does and have, I think the, the I'm not trying to sound rude, but more of our own responsibilities than she does as far as time commitments. That'd be the most polite way to say it, and I don't mean anything against my mother. So, you know, we can only do what we can do. Well, um, I just hope that the takeaway from all this and all these stories and stuff, take care of your family, folks. If the shoe was on the other foot, that's the first person you'd be calling. So, I reckon that's about all I got for today. Everybody stay safe. Uh, don't everybody go crazy over the election, you know, before it's decided, after it's decided, during what are bound to be several recounts that could swing states one way or another. This has been the absolute craziest year that I can recall, period. And I hope y'all don't lose your minds. <laughs> Stay safe. Thanks for tuning in. Catch y'all next time.